you know, how you get everything rolling. So if William's able to establish Chimeco early, denying any Zoroarks hitting the field, he can build his own board of Malamars, get that Onyx ready to rumble, and uh, then simply move out of the Chimeco and be fully set up before Pedro. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, uh, that's going to be very important, especially with the coin flip, because obviously if he's able to sort of go first and uh, do the Chimeco attack before a single Zorak can be played, then that's going to put him in very good stead. We did see that he priced free Psychic Energy and a Shining Arceus, so not, perhaps not ideal, because you know, that means he would be able to see less, less energy early, but as long as he can find one for Chimeco, it should be okay. And Pedro prizing his max potion, which is definitely a little bit awkward for him as long as William does go for a spreading approach. Who knows whether he's going to try and go for a Chimeco route uh, alongside an aggressive Onyx, or if he's going to go for a spreading approach. Looks like he's led a Tapu Koko. That's going to be a really easy way for him to get into Chimeco if he wishes, as he does go first here and find himself a nest ball. Yes, indeed he does. So, and uh, they go with that. They're going to look through his deck just to see what he has access to. Then he will uh, will find that uh, he's yeah there's perhaps access to less psychic energies than he would have liked. Man, he's got himself already a couple Malamars in his hand. He's got himself a Lily and an energy attachment. I think he's just going to go for a Nest Ball here, trying to develop some Inkays, or he's just going to make the statement straight away. Yeah. Chimeco's the boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to throw this Chimeco down. I'm going to stop you from being able to put, put, put out any Zoroaks, any Macargos, and I'm going to make you have a really, really bad day whilst I can set up my Onyx to take, knock out your Zoroaks in one hit when they do eventually hit the field. And we saw, we saw how effective this Chimeco was. Daniel Altavir's a winning list in Memphis was, you know, partly thanks to this Bell of Silence Chimeco, uh, just denying lots of uh, Zoroaks hitting the field and really, you know, flip-flopping that awkward matchup into one that's, you know, quite favorable. And having led this Tapu Koko, he's going to have no trouble going for this Bell of Silence on turn two. So going first has been excellent. He's even able to Mysterious Treasure away a Giratina, which is a free discard for him in this case. And uh, he's going to keep being able to develop his board here. Definitely, and uh, just to make it absolutely clear, the names are currently the wrong way around. We're working on getting no switch. It is William on the left and Pedro on the right. Uh, so here we see this mysterious treasure. You can see he's already eyeing up that Onyx. He's obviously not uh, able to get it this turn with the treasure, but he may be sorting himself out for the following turn. He's just gonna get that Tapu Lele GX. Uh, probably to the hand if he's just going to start shuffling up his deck, but it gives him the options for the future turns. Yeah, it certainly does. Now, there goes the Tapu Lele coming down, and uh, we need to see what he wonder tags for here. He can just pass this turn. There's yeah. no reason really to play it down. It would just allow Pedro to go for a gust effect and force yeah. him to pay retreat. So he's got the option to do whatever he wants yeah. next turn, but right now he's got everything he needs. Just the Trimeco doing Bell of Silence can buy him so much time. Yeah, yeah, it really can. It's just the one shame, the reason why I would have thought maybe he would decide to go for a supporter is that there are no Inkays on the field, and although it's not the end of the world because he has uh, you know, got that Chimeco to buy himself a few more turns, he probably would have liked to see at least one just to you know, get everything his other attackers going. Yeah, that's certainly the case, as we do see Pedro open out here with that Tapu Lele going for the Wonder Tag. Oftentimes it's going to rely on using Energy Drive to get through this Chimeco. It's a combination of RAM and Energy Drive. It's a very awkward way around with this Chimeco, but at least he's able to develop the Tapu Lele before the Bell of Silence comes into effect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's, um, I mean, actually, if he just goes for the Guzma here, he could just KO the Chimeco straight away, I believe. It's got 60 HP, hasn't it's it? Got it's got 70. It's got 70. Oh my, my goodness, wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. We don't know. Does he have double color synergy in his hand as well? Uh, I didn't. I, know, I didn't see one actually. There were a few in his deck, but I know it looks like he's just going to go for the Cynthia. Well, I ain't got that Cynthia. I mean, usually the story is get my Zeruas and I'm happy, but that's not the case here because he's staring down a Chimeco. So the thing he's looking for really is energy cards. Yeah, he w the energy not only to um, get yeah, commit to the Tapu Lele, but also to retreat the Zoroark if he's unable to find uh, if he's unable to find a Guzma. Um, and he's actually yeah only playing. Four double colorless energy. Four double colorless is his only outs here, so having to find not one but two of these is going to be a really big deal. Without any Zoroarks, it's going to be tricky. Yeah, it's going to be extremely tricky, but, but that is what he has to do. So let's see what he gets off the Cynthia. Three, six. This is going to be huge. If he can find one double colorless, he can commit it to the Zerua to start ramming and also give himself the out to pay retreat if he needs to. Also, finding any hammers along the way could be nice. Uh, we know that William does already have. Uh, other energy in the back ready to go, but it's something that he wants to try and see. But he does find double colors, doesn't commit it though. That's interesting. I mean, it, you, you could have even made an argument to commit it to the Tapu Lele because then next turn you could yeah. have you know, attached the second one, actually taking the KO outright, but uh, actually not opting to attach it at all. 
perhaps fearing an enhanced hammer. Yeah, potentially that's the case, but it is going to be a little bit slow for him. It's going to be a long way to deal with this 70 hit point Chimeco, and that's exactly why William has teched it into his list, and it's going to be paying dividends here as he continues to build his own board. You know, that slow start would otherwise look horrendous against a Zoroark deck, but he's been able to get away with it because this Bell of Silence is going to buy him so much time. Yeah, it is, and uh, now he's been able to find a... Well, he's got another search card so he can find another NK and start, you know, setting him up so that he can do psychic recharges and do and do powering up the Onyx quickly to take the Chaos on the Zoroarks when they when the Bell of Silence is eventually stop. And he made the safe play of searching down that Tapu Lele last turn, so he's going to be able to develop even more here. He does have a couple Malamar in his hands, so he could even just go for an even slower approach if he wants to recycle. But no, he is going to go ahead and grab himself that uh, Tapu Lele and he's going to shuffle his hand in and get a fresh six here. Yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff from William as uh, now from that undoubtedly he'll be able to find even more attackers, find even more inkays and uh, just finish on a bell of silence and really make Pedro have a bad day. This is exactly what he needs to do. He needs to develop multiple Malamars before Pedro has any response because oftentimes it's down to the Zorak player to stop lots of Malamars coming into play because then it stops the powerful turns from happening. It stops a big Necrozma GX coming out and doing a huge amount of damage. It stops Onyx jumping onto the field and getting big knockouts. So William finding another Inke here, the ideal turn as he's able to retreat that Tapu Koko freely, use Bell of Silence, no damage counters of course because of resistance. And Pedro's just got the awkward state. He's just looking at that one double colorless and thinking, man, it's ram time, I think. Yeah, it's... Uh not the ideal place to be, but it might be the, the only thing going. And uh, of course, if he does do the Ram once, then that would be real to follow up with another double color on the Tapu Lele to finish off the Chimeco with an energy drive. But he does kind of have to just consider what the best approach here is. And he actually just does commit to the, the double color to so the Tapu Lele straight away. Committed to the bench is interesting. Uh, it, he doesn't have any Guzma effect or anything like that. So um, it's kind of buying William even more time. The only awkward thing is if you commit the double colorless energy to the Zerua and start doing, you know, 20 damage rams, it's still not a lot of pressure. And William, you know, can simply pay retreat out of the Chimeco with that one retreat cost and just go into another attacker. So he's trying to plant the energy where it's a little bit safer for longevity. Yeah. And, but the other problem, of course, being if he wants to use Guzma to switch into the Tapu Lele, then he has to bring up something else on William's bench as well. So you can't Guzma and hit the Chimeco in the same turn if it stays active. William again with more search cards here, eyeing up that Onyx, but he's also actually just going to go for a Necrozma GX with the Netball here. He's really trying to make some big plays early on. Yeah, he really is. Of course, that Necrozma GX having that extremely powerful Prismatic Burst attack, doing 10 plus 60 more damage for each Psychic Energy you just got off of it. So given that you normally just attach free Psychic to it, you're normally doing 190 with it. And again, we have to give credit to William's approach. Oftentimes, this is known as a spread variant. He knows what to do against Zoroark instead. If he can take advantage of a slow start from Enrique, give himself you know, early Guzma on the first Tapu Lele GX, force Pedro to put lots of Zoroarks into play so that he can get his Onyx rolling, it's just going to be a straight up prize race. And this Bell of Silence buying him so much time to do exactly what he wants. Yeah, indeed so. Now here comes to be another Cynthia. Finds himself a Malamar, so he can involve the other NK on the bench as well. And yep. he finds himself a double colorless and a psychic too. Oh, is that some kind of... I think he's in six cards. I think that's okay. Oh, has he used Tate and Liza this turn? I think Tate and Liza was the shuffle draw supporter of his hand. Oh, so we're just no. going to have to try and resolve this. They know yeah. he hasn't shuffled his hand at all. So no. they know which card should be, you know, revealed and put back. Yeah. If anything, it's just that's the only real stumbling block for William. He was doing so well. <laughs> with his uh, with his board state, he uh, didn't need to do much else here. No. He was content just putting another Malamar onto the board, and you know he has the luxury of time here. Uh, it's just a little slip up where you're so used to using Cynthia. I think he only plays one copy of Tate and Liza, um, and it just so happens that he's found the extra card here. So the judges are just going to try and resolve this. Um, but in terms of what William's progression is like, I think it's very strong. The Bell of Silence putting in so much work here. Such an amazing tech card for a matchup like this. Yeah, because you just really just block out your your opponent from being able to do that deck strategy. You know, without Zorox, there's no writers beatings, there's no trades, there's no drawing no drawing more cards, there's no finding all of your your trainers that you use to control the game state and to disrupt your opponent. Uh, so instead, like you said earlier, it just makes your deck a lot more clunky, especially because you tend to skimp out on draw supporters in order to you know make use of this kind of engine. That's exactly right. So. Having this one tech card, the Chimeco, means that if you go first against Zorark players, you've got a really good shot of taking a win against them. He's already got great type coverage against um, Buzzwell variants. His placement looks amazing in this tournament if he can continue to use this Chimeco effectively and make sure that he can take prizes 
on, you know, whenever he's taking a knockout in this matchup, he wants it to always be on two prize Pokemon so that he can just simply attack three times and take huge KOs. Yeah, exactly. He can just, he can just you know, be completely patient about it. You know, just keep using Bell of Silence until he's ready with his attacker to just you know, drop the Onyx down in one turn, wait for Pedro to evolve up into the Zorak, which he will have to do. He, he can't just use Zoras for the whole game. And then when that point comes down, so he slams down the Onyx, attaches all the energy to it and takes a one-hit knockout. So judges still are going over this. It's going to be a tricky one, of course. High stakes at this point in the tournament. It's a large tournament. We've got to make sure that everything, everyone's clear about what to, uh, you know, on. So everyone's clear on the rulings and everyone's uh, fully informed of what they're going to do here. Head judge is just coming over and making sure everything's clarified. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, head judge on stage right now just to uh, make sure that uh, this ruling is resolved appropriately. Just having a little bit of a discussion there. So I mean, if it, if it, uh, resolved anywhere like you know my own experience with it in the past. I imagine one of the cards would just get shuffled back into the deck, and then there, there might be some kind of prize penalty. We, we don't have a confirmation of that yet, but that's kind of we, we're just gonna wait to see what the actual final ruling was. One of the good things with William is he didn't touch his hand after drawing those six. The yeah. judge caught it very swiftly. We know that the double colorless energy was the sixth card that he drew. Here yeah. you can see the judge now there revealing it, it and uh, also. It looks like it might be a shuffle. It might be placed on the deck. It looks like they're shuffling that. Yeah, that card. is that is the that is the new ruling. So it used yeah. to be that it was just placed back on the deck. Now it is shuffled back yeah. in. So William can continue with his turn here, and uh, he is going to put that second Malamar into play and use Bell of Silence to end his turn. A great, another great turn from William. Apart from apart from the little bit of the slip up, uh, we do have confirmation of a three minute time extension. So add three minutes to th that clock that you see on the screen there <laughs> for when this uh, game actually it actually finishes. But uh, yeah, and there was confirmation that William did draw an extra card off of the uh, Tatanalyzer. And it's back over to Pedro, who I think just passed for turn. Yeah. Nothing he could do there. No, no, nothing he could do there at all. But we do also have confirmation that William has received a double prize penalty as well. Okay, that's definitely a way back into the game for Pedro. William's game plan is a race. Yes. Right? He's trying to go for a big Tapu Lele knockout with his uh, Necrozma GX. And um, it also means that then the Onyx can start coming in and swinging. Now that Pedro has to take two less prize cards in order to win the game, that plan is sort of a little bit foiled already. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, with that double prize penalty ruling coming into effect, uh, Pedro only needs to take four prizes to win. So now, all of a sudden, uh, that all those turns that William bought uh, don't seem to have the same level of impact that they might have done otherwise. Although, there's just another draw pass from Pedro. Bell of Silence completely locking Pedro out of this game. Four double colors energy and just, you know, uh, Cynthia's are the only way that he can try and refresh his hand. I think his hand's just full of Zoroark, yeah. <laughs> which in every other the situation is phenomenal, but right now it's doing him no good as William is able to again patiently improve his board state. Yeah, and, and uh, don't forget there is a and the Crosma GX just sitting uh, sitting pretty. It's a little bit off camera there on the bottom side of the board, so he I imagine he will be charging that up, ready to take a KO on something when he feels like it's the most opportune moment to do so. He's agonizing over an acrobike. Looks like he's going to discard a double color strategy, so this better be a good card that he's drawing into. Looks like it's going to be a judge. Uh, maybe some for his own refresh here. Pedro looks at his top card that he's drawn for turn, doesn't do him any good. <laughs> William draws uh, into a Cynthia, which is nice, but he's just letting his own hand rack up. And once again, it's gonna use Bell of Silence. Pedro finally finds a card. It's gonna be a crushing hammer. And uh, it gets tails, so it's effectively done nothing. William back over to him as uh, he's just drawn into an escape rope. He's happy to bell of silence. <laughs> Pedro, happy to pass, or not happy about it, yeah, just yeah. having to pass. <laughs> William draws into a Guzma, passing over again. Yeah, there you go. this is, uh, must be so frustrating if you're in Pedro's, uh, if you're in Pedro's chair right now, <laughs> just thinking, right, can, can I not just do something? No, uh, okay, I guess I'll just keep draw passing then. William holding on to a lot of supporter cards, uh, making sure that he has the outs. Pedro not doing much at all. Not many playable cards. Looks like he's finally eyeing up something. It's he's Guzma. actually going to go for a Guzma here. He can initiate a race here by putting um, 100 damage with Energy Drive on William's uh, Necrozma GX. And this could initiate the race uh, from now. Yeah, because, I mean, that, that Necrozma already has enough energy on it to just do Prismatic Burst and KO the type of Lele. That would mean that uh, William would be back even on prizes technically with uh, Pedro, but it then it would also mean that Pedro uh, was able to find his Zoroarks again. So if he does go for the, pr for the Prismatic Burst, he'd probably like, make sure he, uh, he, that is a follow-up from a judge. Then wow. he'd play the judge first to just go cut down Pedro's hand size. 
It's a really interesting choice from William. He used a Mysterious Treasure. There was a live in in there that he could have gone for. He's opted not to put it down. And uh, he's just going to try and shuffle both hands in for, for a judge here. If he can get a Prismatic Burst knockout and Pedro doesn't draw great off it, yeah. he could just carry through this game. Yeah, he has to put down the in because remember, it's a little bit off camera. He already has a full bench. There's a Chimeco. Oh, okay. Of off course, the yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> so he was just doing deck thinning with that Mysterious Treasure, got rid of a uh, Psychic Tapu Lele, which he's not going for with this matchup. So big Prismatic Burst for the knockout. Yeah, takes the knockout uh, onto the Tapu Lele for 190 damage, picks up two Psychic Energy off his prize cards. He's going to be pretty happy to see those, I imagine. That's a big deal. Uh, he's already got three into his discard pile now with that Prismatic Burst attack, but having manual attachments on top is always going to be helpful. Here's the first Zoroark from Pedro. He can finally get to playing some cards down and doing uh, as best he can. He's holding on to a Power Pad as well. I think there's an Ultra Ball in his hand, so he can get himself a Tapu Lele as well and uh, refresh completely and put himself back in good stead to take a knockout here. Yeah, and uh, now, but of course, now that the Zorak is out, it does mean that uh, Pedro does finally have access to trade, so he will be able to start discarding some cards and uh, drawing some more cards off that. Does uh, do a Tapu Lele first, uh, finds a Cynthia with the Wonder Tag, debating whether to go for a Pow Pad before playing it. It looks like he will actually go for that. Yeah, he's going to put back in a Cynthia and uh, I believe a Guzma, that was the other supporter that he's played already so far before using his own Cynthia. Those are targets that he doesn't really want to draw into because he wants to find double colour synergy exactly this turn. So a little bit interesting on that side, but perhaps he's concerned about a future Bell of Silence coming down um, because that would be definitely an awkward thing for him because if ever that comes back into effect and he's only got you know one Zorak into play, it's going to be very awkward for him all over again and William can sort of continue that lock. So uh, we are seeing Pedro drawing six. He still has his trade available. He so does. if he can find double colors and a few more Zoroarks, he's going to be pretty happy. Yeah, it's for double colors especially because then he can just you know, take the take the knockout onto the uh, the Krozma GX, and then at that point it will force uh, William to find that Onyx, which shouldn't be too hard. I, I know he had it in his hand at one point, but he played the. Did he draw off the Judge actually? The, on the Onyx. Did he draw the Onyx off the Judge? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't really seen William's hand after that. But here come the Zoroarks. He's used his first trade. He's got two more available to him. He's got a, a lower Muck, which he can happily get rid of. Uh, that's always a card for a different matchup. So you can simply trade that away in this one. Uh, finds himself double colorless energy. is oh. huge. That is exactly what he needs to see. So double colors means he will be able to do bright speed for a knockout onto the Necrozma. And he's actually going to be only two prizes away from winning the game by doing that. That's going to be incredible for him. He... Uh, He's looking at a great ball here, not able to find a mag cargo, which would have been, you know, icing the cake here. He's done so well off of this judge, got into three Zoroarks, got a double colorless energy, and he's in really good shape. There's the Chimeco on the board still, <laughs> yeah, just uh, helping us out a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Good. We're going to uh, be able to actually see it now. Um, yeah, wow, an amazing turn for Pedro. So just, just finding that double colorless means that he's already potentially in like a game-winning situation, which is a bit crazy, but that's the impact of price penalty can have. And you know, sadly, some of these things happen, you know, it just, you know, in the heat in the moment, you just make that mistake and it can cost you in the worst possible way. He's also eyeing up counter catcher. It's not live. Um, so this double colorless has to be what he wants to go for. There are a couple Malamars which are tempting, uh, but here comes the double colorless energy. And uh, man, his hand is strong at this point as well. He's even got Acerolo as a potential backup move here. Yeah, and uh, just yeah, asking how many cards are in the hand. And before just taking the knockout, two prizes for Pedro, two prizes away from winning the game. Back action back onto William. How, what can he do here to, to try and try and seal this? If if Pedro only had four prizes left, it would be absolutely fine. But as it stands currently, I don't know what he can do because there's just there's a tap with Lele there sitting pretty. It wouldn't take that much effort for Pedro to KO it. It's a big turn for William. It's how the judge has done on his own end. It didn't really hurt Pedro. He got everything he needed. William's quickly scouting the discard pile. He's got Tapu Koko. He's got two Balabars on the board. So if he could get Onyx, double colorless energy, two psychic recharges, then suddenly William looks in good shape. But it's a lot to ask for from his own judge. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, there you go. he does show us now what's in his hand. He, yeah, he did actually draw the Onyx off Ooh, the judge. It's that's there huge. in his hand. He's got Onyx and Cynthia. He did earlier discard one of his double colour synergies. He's only running three, so it's going to be a big draw. But I think that's his chance to win this game. I can't see much else doing any good here. It's got to be a big, risky Cynthia. It's got to be runner-runner. It's got to be you know, Onyx, KO, 
then Zoro and then the Pedro not being able to find the means to KO the, the Lele, which actually I don't think he can do because he can't Guzma and the Kukui in the same turn. And then again, just uh, if this Yonix gets KO'd, coming back and being charged up again. So here we go. Onyx hits the board. Big Cynthia, double colour synergy puts William in great shape. If he doesn't get it, it's going to be a very awkward turn for him, and Pedro looks to be pulling way ahead, so this Cynthia is massive. One, two, three, four, <laughs> Not yet. five. Six. Oh, he misses. Oh, it's a big whiff from him, as oh, we said. No. Having got rid of one double colour synergy already with an acro bike. Oh, I don't really know what Pedro, oh, sorry, what William can do now. He has to just charge up over two turns. Like he has to just hope that he has enough time still to uh, be able to pull this off. Even though that, yeah, missing the double colors means that he can't get the knockout this turn. There's three attachments to his Onyx. He's going to put down, uh, oh, sorry, move the Trimeco into the active. That at the very least stops a uh, Mag Cargo and a Tapu Lele hitting the board. So that's going to make life a little bit harder for Pedro. It's not quite guaranteed for him, um, but. Yeah. It's still, you know, three Zoroks on the board, a lot of trades. Yeah. It's quite an easy find to get Guzma at this point. It, it most certainly is. Another trade from uh, Pedro discarding an Enhanced Hammer, finding two more cards. But there's always not even much he needs at this point because he's just going to KO the Chimeco. And then even if uh, William returns the KO with the Onyx, the Onyx just gets KO'd back and Pedro takes the game. So here we go. Uh, he's got himself a Scape Rope currently in his hand. He does have another double colorless energy. So he could also go for an approach where he just plays a Scape Rope. Everything's a non-GX on William's board, aside from Tapu Lele, which he could just casually two shots anyway. Now that he's drawn into another double colors energy. So he's looking in really good shape from all the trades. Yeah, he really is. And uh, this is the, and it's almost like as soon as the Bell of Silence stopped, the floodgates just opened, right? It was just here, Zorok, 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 doing all the trades and finding the double colors and taking that knockout. It just but put Pedro right back in this. The thing is, William had the benefit of time before that awkward prize penalty. I mean, he only has himself to blame. It's an unfortunate situation for him. He otherwise would have such a great position board-wise here um, with so many non jexes on the field. He would have had time to build up Onyx and maybe even the second across for GX, who knows? Yeah. Uh, but it's just that big old prize penalty has really hurt him here and allowed it Pedro to race ahead after the Bell of Silence finally uh, finished. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely, absolutely the case. And now there's two Zoroarchs ready to go as well, both of which can just uh, take down that Onyx fairly easily. And I'm not even sure if, I don't believe William's playing Enhanced Hammer or anything like that. So if he was, maybe he could you know, try and uh, disrupt Pedro a little bit and you know, stop him being, from being able to have the guaranteed follow-up attack. But if not, yeah, I know he's not playing Enhanced Hammer, so... Yep. Not William concedes. He knows that Pedro, even if he could take a knockout with Onyx, it's so easy for him to get an easy response that uh, he's going to have to scoop it up here. By himself, time. He does still have just over 30 minutes to try and make a comeback here. He'll be able to get to go first again, and we'll see if Bell of Silence can once again do the trick, uh, because it was definitely helping him a lot in yeah, that first game. Yeah, it was. He was. He pretty much lost solely on the basis of that prize penalty, because uh, had it not been for that, that, all the time that he bought himself from Bell of Silence would have been more than enough to him to just get the Onyx uh, up and rolling and uh, just to, to take six prizes before Pedro could uh, stop him from doing so. He can take comfort in his approach play. The Bell of Silence put in so much work. If he's able to uh, either pay retreat out of any attacker into that Bell of Silence turn two, he's going to be in good shape all over again. And the great thing is the Chimeco is just a uh, psychic basic, so he has so many search options to get it on the field for turn two to attack. Yeah, and uh, it's, like, it's the sort of name of the game of the Malamar deck especially is that it just it has so much consistency options because it can play the full complement of four Mysterious Treasure and four Ultra Ball, and it plays even, I mean, this, this even plays Nest Ball, it plays Acro Bikes, and just all of these search cards that mean that you're like to be able to do your setup every single game. It was a remarkable game to watch. Uh, huge back and forth of pass and Bell of Silence pass, <laughs> yeah. Bell of Silence pass. And then, as you said, the floodgates opened and it was knockout, knockout game. <laughs> it was really incredible. Yeah, and, uh, that was all she wrote. Now, like, very much like you said, both players have got to be comfortable in the approach that they took. Uh, now, they just got to, William just has to make sure to, uh, you know, draw five instead of six if he plays the Tate of Liza again. That's, that's, that's his key to winning the game. Another big... Uh, deal was how brutal that judge was in terms of it worked against William way more than it helped him. That's yeah. 
kind of the risk. Drawing four cards as our right deck is so consistent that one hit the field, then three hit the field. Yeah. And uh, he was able to completely get his setup going, even with just five cards to work with. Whereas William doesn't have an inherent draw engine. Those four cards really did hurt him in the end. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Any Zorok deck will just automatically be less vulnerable to judge because if you do find your one, just one Zorok is out, you're already feeling so much more comfortable in being able to find your way out of that lower hand size. Looks like we're going to see a mulligan here from Pedro. Going to be an extra draw for William. Uh, before he's even able to start his turn here. But as you said, that's the route he needs to take. Bell of Silence going to buy him time, build up that Malamar board, get Onyx rolling, get that Necrozma GX, especially if uh, Pedro once again puts a Tapu Lele on the board. It means that he can exit Bell of Silence whilst taking the first two prizes instead of just taking a one prize knockout. And that means he can race super efficiently. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's uh, going to be something to keep in mind now. Let's see, is there going to be another... Does he finally race it this time? He's uh, drawing his opening seven. And uh, we, we do see just AJ there, just reminding the players to sort of uh, where they have to play best uh, place to the Pokemon so that they actually do end up on on the, on the camera view. They're doing us a big favor, yeah. making sure that everything is uh, in camera shot for us so that we can uh, see everything and see all the action. That's always what we're trying to deliver here for ourselves and as well, of course, for your benefit so that we know exactly what's going on. Yeah, AJ, of course, probably a familiar face for those of you watching back home. He was, of course, one of the commentators for the last Latin American International Championships. And uh, so it's really great to see him here again, uh, doing his uh, perhaps more usual judging role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's always around judging yeah. these big tournaments and uh, he does a phenomenal job, as do all the judges here, catching things very early as well, making their own lives easier for mm -hmm. making those rulings and making the game go smoothly. So yeah. can't credit these guys enough. No, I uh, could not agree more. Now, it's like... Uh, Pedro had yet another no basic hand, so uh, William's going to get to draw two cards now going first, which is absolutely, you've got to be smiling if you're William right now. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal for him. Three cards is always a nice thing. Um, he's going to have to, really a big deal here is whether he's started one of these chunkier basic Pokemon. If he leads something like an Onix, a Shining Arceus, or an Acrosma GX, he's, or even that Giratina that he plays one copy of, that's going to be really annoying for him and make it life difficult to get into that Bell of Silence. If he gets, you know, a Tapu Koko start, or um, even something like a Inke, or if you're fortunate enough to get the Chime Echo itself, you're in great shape to get Bell of Silence down. Yeah, prize-wise for both players. Oh, one of the double colorlesses prized for for Pedro is not great news because given that it, those are the only four energies that he plays, and uh, yeah, I mean, meanwhile the Williams prizes looked a lot better, generally speaking, much more of a spread of things uh, that was a lot easier to deal with. And William Pretty, wow, his hand is absolutely stacked here. So many ball search cards, a Lily hiding in there as well. He has energy for the turn, which he'll probably have to commit to the active uh, so that he can guarantee like payment of retreat and get a Chimeco rolling next turn. I think William disagrees. Oh boy. <laughs> I mean, he also has a double colors energy in his hand as well, so he could uh, commit an attachment there and just pay retreat out of the Inca if he wants to. But he definitely wants to use Bell of Silence on turn two. We know that for a fact, so... Committing one attachment this turn is going to be important. At the same time, obviously, putting Psychics in your discard pile, never a bad plan with Malamar. Well, no, exactly. Especially when, like you said, he does have the double colors, so very, very, that he could very easily commit somewhere else, and that would be absolutely fine for him. But it would be, again, it would be interesting to see what he actually opts to go for here. I don't believe, yeah, the Chimeco is in his deck. I didn't see it in his prizes. But yeah, he's just having a look through to make sure that he knows what is in there. It's got to be the it's got to be the Chime yeah. Echo. It's uh it's what he directly went for on his first search game one. We saw how incredible it was. It turned the game into a farce of passing back and forth <laughs> uh, while he was able to take full advantage. And uh, he's going to continue his turn with a big Ultra Ball here, and uh, continue to develop his board. Yeah, uh, actually, his discard options aren't really ideal. Though his hand is stacked, it's a lot of stuff that he perhaps would not really want to get rid of. So early, lots of draw supporters he's having to throw away a Guzma actually, which is. Uh, that's uh, I mean, not really great for him, given that I don't believe he's playing that high account of Guzma. He, yeah, he's only playing three, so uh, that means that he's only going to have access to two more. It does mean that he can uh, search for maybe even a Tapu Koko, so he has a nice freedom of retreat uh, to give himself the most options for next turn. Or he can, like we say, commit that double color synergy to an Inke uh, and just go straight into the Chimeco and put something else down. Here comes the Tapu Koko, so he has that nice pivot option. Uh, something, something else uh, important to mention is that for for Williams this uh, specifically, we've seen a lot of uh, these Malamolas previously playing uh, Escape Board as a means of just retreating uh, one energy retreat cost Pokemon, and, or perhaps going back to you mentioned the uh, Joe Delist in Japan actually played for Spell Tag to you know for when stuff gets knocked out doing 
a bit more of that uh, spreading of damage counters. Williams playing neither of those. He's playing one escape probe. But that's really pretty much his only switch card apart from Tate and Liza. Yeah, no tools at all in no. his entire deck list. He's just playing uh, that escape probe, that Tate and Liza, and sometimes you just have to use double colorless energy to pay retreat in this list. Yeah, exactly. I've tested a little bit of it, and sometimes double colorless is your best quote unquote switch card. Yeah, I, I tell you, mate, he was he was uh, on that Lysander Labs. He knew. <laughs> he, he must have known. Yeah, <laughs> he is going to be able to find himself another Inke here after a. I think it was a big lily that he did uh, for an extra load of cards. So he's getting his board nice and set up. Again, just looking to retreat out of this guy. He can attach the uh, to the Chimeco. He's in an awkward spot because if he attached to the Inke and simply paid retreat, he would be weak to potential Guzma plays. Yeah. Uh, but committing the energy to the Chimeco means he's weak to potential Crushing Hammer plays. So it's one of those things where he had to take a gamble on one of them happening. The Crushing Hammer's a 50-50 at the best of times. So I feel like this is the safest bet. Yeah, I think uh, he's talking about, you know, calculating probabilities on the fly. This is uh, probably, statistically speaking, over the, over the large number of games, the option that will work the, the most uh, times. So Pedro does have an opening Ultra Ball, eyeing up that Tapu Lele, trying to get it down before Bell of Silence comes into play. You can see him eyeing up Zeruas as well. So he's going to try and get his, you know, average approach of putting uh, the Zeruas into play. Obviously, it's a great way to thin his deck as well. We know that double color synergies are going to be the things he needs to root out of his deck quite quickly. Um, so the Professor Realm here could be pretty impactful. I mean, and, uh, it, it's, it's, it's what you go for if you're playing Zorok now that this card is out. You know, you're getting the turn one type of and getting the, getting the Elm just to get all the basics that you need. Even if there's a good chance you won't be able to evolve them into Zoroks for a while, at least you have them there ready. And like you said, it deck thins as well, so you can draw more useful, more useful cards. And he's going all out to get three more Zoroas. It looks like he was debating uh, the Ditto, uh, but instead he's just going to go for three simple Zoroas that can uh, build up into better Pokemon. Maybe he's concerned about spread here or something along those lines. Yeah, two flying flips would mean a KO on the Ditto, and especially given that uh, the Ditto wouldn't really be able to evolve into anything. I, think, I don't think there's any non-ability -evo non evolutions yeah. in his deck. Uh, and his Mad Cargo is actually prized as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess there's only really one option if he's not going to be using a Lola Muck, which there's no real reason to yeah. in this matchup. No, so. no, but yeah, there's literally not a single evolution Pokemon in his deck which doesn't have an ability. Like, they yeah. all have abilities. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, really disrupted by Bell of Silence and it's a great call from William to add it into his deck. As Pedro doesn't have any crushing hammers to scare William, he can just simply move on and uh, pay retreat out of this Inke, which we're going to see here, and uh, he can start his Bell of Silence loop. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit like game one all over again. Uh, there's the energy going on to the active. There's not really much else that Sir William can do with his hand right now, so he might just be going for a Cynthia here just to, well, okay, he does have a Malamar, so he'll evolve that, obviously, but uh, other than that, yeah, probably just going to go for the Cynthia and try and find some more attackers. Yeah, cautiously doing the Cynthia, we saw how he was fairly happy to just sit on a few supporters whilst in that Bell of Silence loop. I think one of the reasons why he might be going for the Cynthia now uh, is so that he can have options for Guzma uh, as quickly as possible. He was holding on to a double colorless energy that could have helped him uh, protect his own Malamar from being gusted. That might be one of Pedro's only ways out of the Bell of Silence loop. Yeah, but as it stands right now, he just opted to not attach it, perhaps fearing what happened in the last time where when he needed double colorless to put the Onyx at the right moment, he just didn't have access to it and would rather just keep it. Finds himself another Nest Ball, which is a nice pickup as well. Uh, if he wants to develop more Inkays or once again, try and start threatening that Necrozma GX early on. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw that it was uh, able to take a knockout on the type of later there and uh, start accelerating the price rate a little bit, trying to come back from that prize penalty. But it does look like that he's just going to leave it for now, just decide to use the Nest Ball when he actually needs to get a thing he needs specifically, especially because if, if Chameka gets KO'd, then uh, William can just bring up the Tapu Koko and then decide what to retreat into after from when getting the thing from the Nest Ball. So William finishing his turn with that Bell of Silence. So disruptive, so awkward for Pedro, who's currently not got any energies in his hand, I believe. So uh, that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. Uh, he was fortunate enough to get one off of a Cynthia last game. Is he going to be able to again here as he does reach over? And he is once again going to try and find one of these double colorless. We know one's prized, so the odds are a little bit against him. Well, but either way, it's what he's, it's what he's got to do. And again, if he does find one, it'll be interesting to see what he what decision he opts for in terms of you know, attaching to the active or attaching to the tapu lele, what, which one he thinks will actually work out better for him. Well, you've got to think uh, he would try and do the same again. Uh, he wanted to just make sure he could energy drive last time. Doesn't find any double colorless energies at all here, so he's just going to have to pass as William can start building his board if he wants to. 
Yeah. Um, he didn't want to use Nespol last turn, uh, which kind of leads me to believe he wouldn't be going for an Inke. It means that he can just get himself in a Crosma GX this turn and start using manual attachments as well as uh, some psychic recharges to get that rolling. Yeah, now, interestingly enough, one uh, card which is kind of the biggest new addition that the Malamar deck gained, which uh, William is playing, but he hasn't dropped it this match, is uh, that Giratina that we saw in his deck. Not really that great in this matchup, considering it doesn't really... It has a hard time even doing uh, two-shot on a um, on a Zorak. It can just about get there, because uh, it can do 110 twice, but uh, really not what you want to be going for most of the time. And actually, interestingly, he does go for the NK instead of the Necrozma. Yeah, going to grab NK. I mean, it's not a bad thing for him. Uh, it's just interesting that he chose not to do it last turn if he was going to commit to an NK, but looks like he's going to just do a Cynthia here before committing any energy cards or anything like that. So pretty interesting. He, the thing is, he has the benefit of time. There's no there's no threat coming down from Pedro anytime soon. Never even saw a single DCE, so William can just try and get as many Inkes down on the board as possible. And as we saw last game, he couldn't get that on its working because he only had two Malamars in play. Yeah. So now having this third Inke does give him that little buffer. Yeah. In terms of time, though, it is a double-edged sword because he, has, he does have all the time in this game specifically to build up his board and uh, to make sure that he can set himself up to win. But the longer he takes, the more that ground timer is ticking down. And of course, given that he has already won game down, he needs to make sure that he is, doesn't end up building up so slowly that he actually doesn't have time to finish out a game three. Definitely true. So William not wanting to play any other cards, just, just go for a Bell of Silence here. Pedro, does he have anything? He can use a Professor Elm just to thin some cards out of his deck. He could uh, put down the Slugmer if he wants to, um, but uh, it's not going to be evolving into a Macargo anytime soon. No, um, right. But he's just trying to thin cards out of his deck at this point. And there seems to be some another kind of discussion going on with the judges. So you, you see someone's like raised their hand over there. Yeah, I'm not sure why. No. I mean, it feels like the Bell of Silence was... Uh, announced and uh, that's all going to be good. Oh, it looks like there's some cards that actually fell off the table there. It might be um, William's uh, discard pile that fell down. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's I, think it, I think it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it looked okay. like it was uh, cards just on the uh, on the floor there, but it looks like everything was picked up and sorted by the judge, who's just <laughs> crouching down now and scouting <laughs> the area. Yeah. Fortunately, we've got a beautiful green sort of astroturf scenery yeah. uh, for the Pokemon Stadium as our stage here, so it's quite easy to spot some of these cards. Yeah. Also, for those of you uh, at home watching, perhaps uh, don't get quite the full experience of the venue, we actually have, uh, we're currently sitting, we can see all the crowd from right where we're standing, and we have like, actually a good view from the match as well as on our screen, so physically we can actually see what's going on over there, so it's actually quite a nice viewpoint we've got here. So Pedro is going to grab himself just that one Ditto Prism Star from the Professor Elm. He's not even able to play it down onto the board because of the Bell of Silence. But it does thin one card from his, uh, from his deck. And uh, he's going to send it over to William once again. Yeah, another, another pass after the Fresh Elms lecture. But uh, yeah, William still not quite sure if he wants to switch gears just yet. He does opt to just play another Cynthia for now. The only thing here is that he's using Cynthia after Cynthia. It might hurt him a little bit later on in the game because he's used so many supporter cards. I liked his patient approach last time by just letting his hand accumulate naturally. Yeah. Um, because now he's you know only got Lilies to finish him out of the game here, but he wants to get this Necrozma. That's kind of what he's looking for this turn because he wants to start getting value from his Malamars. Yeah, it's just in it's just interesting though because if he wants to get Necrozma, he could have done it with that Nest Ball earlier, but maybe he's thinking or realizing he would like to have a third Inke as well, because obviously in the ideal situation, you can do Psychic Recharge three times onto Necrozma and start taking knockouts that way. There goes the Malamar onto the Inke that was benched, but looks like, again, no usage of the Mysterious Treasure he drew. Yeah, Bell of Silence straight away. Um, he'll only want to use the Mysterious Treasure once he's able to find a Guzman in his hand, so it feels like the accumulation is going to start cracking on. Uh, time is... On Pedro's side, though, he actually doesn't need to be doing anything to be winning the game right now, which no. is quite incredible for him. Obviously, William's hand is going to start accumulating. Uh, as soon as he finds himself that Guzma, you've got to think that he's going to start trying to find that uh, Necrozma GX. Yeah, because Guzma is the happy lady just to take the first big prize of the game. And... Um, it's, again, it's a little bit unfortunate for uh, William because he does have the Tapu Lele in his hand which he used to search for the Guzma, but then, of course, he wouldn't have the bench place for the Necrozma, so he can't really go for that. Pedro looking at his hand, not much help anywhere. <laughs> Debating putting down a stadium, it would increase his ram damage to 30, but that's not too big of a deal unless there's some sort of Kakui math involved, or he could then move into an energy drive, but there's no sight of any double colors energies just yet. No, there's not. Now, 
Uh, although uh, William did actually, did actually destroy his own double colored Sanji for the turn. Could it maybe be a consideration to flying flip here? It would stop the. It would mean that the Zoroks could come out, but then after two flying flips, they could. It could make it easier for Necrozma's to KO the Zoroks as well. And he's well, actually he's oh. doing something. Why flying flip when you can do ultimate arrow oh. for uh, three damage on each of your opponent's Pokemon? Mm. So. William not content to sit around and uh, just let the game or the clock slip away from him. He's going to try and put some pressure on with his Shining Arsis here, breaking the Bell of Silence loop and uh, going for three counters on each of Pedro's Pokemon, breaking the Bell of Silence lock and allowing Pedro to potentially build up his board. But William's just hoping that these damage counters are influential enough to yeah. put things in range. Yeah, well, it, it could potentially work out really nicely for him because... If we, I mean, if none of these Zoroks, uh, none of these Zoras are able to evolve, then another another ultimate arrow means that he's taking a lot of prizes. But Pedro's been patient. <laughs> he's been <laughs> yes. and when he's playing no cards, you know that he's got nothing but abilities going on there. So uh, he is holding on to enhanced hammer as well, which is pretty nice for him. He can start threatening the uh, the shining Arceus if he wants to. But it looks like he's going to discard them because he does actually have the stadium already in play. So if he can just find himself a double colors energy, he can deal with the Shining Arceus all in one go. So that's going to be the more aggressive route he goes for as he ultra balls those away, looking for more Zoroark so he can get into that double colors energy. Yeah, the ultimate arrow perhaps not being done at exactly the right time as uh, now all these Zoroaks have evolved up and uh, even they've all been taking 30 damage. So now even with even with the 30 damage that has been done because of the psychic resistance, the Krozma can't uh, one-hit KO them. So, because we would be 10 short after the minus 20 from resistance. So, it's just still kind of an, an onic strategy that, uh, that William will have to pursue here. So, Pedro shuffling up his hand before doing all these crazy trades. As you mentioned, the stadium's in play. Oh, he actually does have double color synergy, so he's got everything he needs here. Except he plays a Symphony. Oh, no, he's trading it away. Okay. <laughs> 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 I, was, I was gobsmacked there, but yeah, it, it, is a, uh, it is a trade into another trade. He's got everything he needs already, so that's going to be good. Yeah, but I think my heart uh, skipped a beat there. It's like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, he's got Crushing Hammer as well. He doesn't really need to play any of these cards. He's just going to trade it away once again. Uh, got himself Kukui as well for some future turns. There's, There's the stadium. There's the stadium. Well, he does need one more bench Pokemon, He's actually. got the Ditto in his hand. Oh, okay. The earlier fine. Elm. Yeah. He's going to have a quick scout of the discard pile. William does have three Malamars on the board, so it's always good to keep track of how many Psychic Energies are hitting the discard. There's already one in there, and knocking out the Shining Arceus, which Pedro's got to do, is going to put even more into the discard pile. Yeah. It, is he maybe debating using that Acerola? Maybe, maybe picking up the Tapu Lele, because that could be an easy knockout later. Or even the Zerua. Yeah. If he can't get another Zoroark out this turn, he may just want to pick it up and put it back down. But it looks like uh, he's just, just going to have a little scout of his own discard pile here see if there's anything else he needs to fear. Um, it could be a cheeky one prize that William could pick up if he's able to recycle a Shining Arceus. He's also got that uh, Kakui as well, which he might be going for instead. If we can find himself another Zoroark, that's the ideal situation. Yeah, it would be. It's like double colors energy as well. Not mm. too much help beyond that, but no. you know he's built his board now. Yeah, yeah he has, and uh, the, the, with three Zoroarks out, uh, again, Pedro's just in like this really fantastic situation that as soon as that that's always the problem with uh, Chimeco is that if you can't capitalize on it once you break the lock, if you don't swap over it at the right time, then you end up, end up in a situation like this where Pedro has been patient and has, got, has gotten all of his Zoroarks out. And, well, n now what do you do? Well, the only thing is Pedro just took a single prize here. And there are three Malamars on this board. So William going to be able to find himself either a Necrozma GX or an Onyx and uh, do a bunch of psychic recharges. He could manually attach on top of this and take a big knockout. He can just try and go two prizes, two prizes, two prizes, the same way he wanted to approach the first game. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, if you can sort of do it for a combination of uh, Onyx and Necrozma. Obviously, Onyx being a lot easier to get to, uh, to get there with because, uh, because of the, well, rather trade-wise, it's better because it's only worth one prize. But Necrozma can still get the KO here with the triple psychic recharge. And like you said, a manual attachment from the hand would be enough damage to take the knockouts. He's going to instantly retreat out of his um, oh. Tapu Koko. Doesn't have any energy in his hand, so instead he's going to go for a Black Grey GX. He's going full spread this game. He really is going full spread, and this actually opens up opens up quite interestingly here because maybe he's just thinking, I'm going to 
you know, get another Shining Arceus out, do a few more ultimate arrows, do maybe some flying flips in the intermediary, and actually just literally take all six of his prizes in one turn. I mean, he just dealt 400 damage. And that's absolutely incredible. He could start getting into magical swap range. So this is, this is huge. We do know that Pedro has prizes, max potion. We have to stress that. That's really important. He is holding on to one Ace Aroda, so he will be able to undo a decent amount of this damage, but it's still just so many counters on this board. Yeah, it's, in fact, he would probably have to pick up the Tapu Lele at this point because that's like a thing with two prizes, which needs 40 less HP on it to get those two prizes. Judge is just confirming. Black Ray isn't affected by weakness or resistance, uh, as it does stay on the card, so yeah. it would just do the flat 100 to the active Zoro arc. Yes, indeed. I, I think uh, I, play, I was playing the Crossbow in a sort of a casual game once and I made a mistake the other way around. I thought the Black Ray could uh, do 200 to starting Psychic Week and it didn't and uh, <laughs> I felt very, very silly. <laughs> <laughs> here comes a great ball uh, from Pedro here. Eyeing up, looks like a Tapu Coco. Maybe it's the card that he just wants to trade away at this point, uh, thinning his deck even further. Um, he can't reach into that max potion as it is prized, but... Uh, He's got to be a little concerned about the amount of damage counters that's on his field. Yeah, he, he needs to really play that Ace Roller this turn. And uh, I'm actually just trying to, uh, going back to school here, I'm trying to do some maths here to see that even if, if he does pick up the Tapu Lele, will there still be enough damage to take six prizes on? Because we've got sort of you know, 60 from the Zor Zora and then another 120 from the Orange Guru. That's two there for 180 HP. I don't think there's enough after that to KO two Zorox as well. Yeah, so he's got uh, 130 on each Zoroark, so we're on 390, 420 with the Zerua with 30 damage on it as well. So he's got a, like, 100% he's got to pick up at least a Zoroark or a Tapu Lele. Uh, it's a lot of damage that, he can play, that William can play around with, but I don't think it's enough to get a six prize sweep. No. Uh, maybe it's a little easier if the Zerua stays unevolved this turn. Yes, it will, will be, because then that will be... 60 on the 60 HP on the Zora plus 120 on the Orang Guru. That's mm -hmm. like an, an EX worth 180 yeah. HP essentially. It's so like it's easier than Tapu Lele to take two prizes on. So yeah. oh, but no, it's 10 more. No, it's 150 compared to. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah, 10 more. But um, yeah, it's still you know something that Pedro wants to avoid. Yeah, and either way, so either way, the SRL is coming down. So that's uh, yeah, up goes the Tapu Lele. That is the sort of lowest amount of uh, eight, the, the terms of like HP damage done to prize ratio, that is the best thing there at 170. So it makes sense to pick that up over everything else. Replaces it with a Tapu Coco. He wants to uh, make sure he can do the most amount of damage with Rata's beating. It's an interesting choice for him to put it into play. Uh, was he digging for uh, something else this turn instead? He already committed the choice band to the active. Maybe he's trying to clean up this Necrozma later down with his own flying flip. Potentially, yeah. Uh, I think the other thing that doesn't work out so nicely for Williams specifically is that his because his bench is full, he can't you know do some kind of play where he puts down another Arceus and uh, tries to go for the, another ultimate arrow uh, to do 30 every way. He, if he wanted to do more spread damage, he'd have to go for a flying flip. So here is 160 damage, Riotus beating thanks to the choice band and stadium combined. William eyeing up what else he needs to do here, counting damage just like we are, seeing where best to place it. And uh, he has the option to retreat into anything else. He might have double color synergy in his hand. It could just be a flying flip turn to, again, put him just over the edge with damage. Um, he's been happy that the Necrozma GX hasn't been knocked out, obviously. Um, he could, uh, he's got a lot of options available to him. Yeah, he does. He could, uh, he could just go for a Prismatic Burst here and take the knockout. It would mean that some of the work that the Black Ray had put in is undone, but at the same time, it does mean that he'd be two prizes closer to winning, and then he'd only need to magical swap around, you know, four prizes worth of damage to win. Yeah, there's not much going on in his hand. It looked like there was an escape rope, one Psychic Energy card. I don't think many helpful supporters for William, so he may just have to uh, deal with what's in front of him. He's got one energy in his hand. We are going to see the retreat. No, no, because he's doing a Prismatic Burst. Oh, Prismatic Burst, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's the knockout. Two prizes for William. The Zoroks are still ready to get swept as well. So if uh, Pedro can clean up this Necrozma GX quite easily with a flying flip, but there's still a lot of damage on his board that he's going to try and clear off. Yeah, again, it, there isn't quite enough damage to take the win here. He could go, because again, 180, so that would be, he, he has, yeah, no, it's not enough because you can move, I'm thinking like in terms of the sixes, move the three sixes to the Oranguru and the Zora, that would knock that out. And then he'd have like a, a six, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be enough, basically. He'd have, done Matthew, he'd have like 110 left or something like that. Yeah, but at the same time, just having that magical swap available can make the most out of that 
damage. So yeah. if William just doesn't put down another GX Pokemon, he could again go for an Onyx play into uh, a Magical Swap play. Something like that could be his end game here. So uh, we oh, obviously see another Acerola. Acerola picking up that damage. William's Black Ray is slowly getting... Uh, you know, less and less effective here. Yeah. He's going to replay that Zoroa. He can replay a Zoroark as well if he wishes. He's going to put down that uh, Ditto Prism Star. Get Zoroark Ooh. online. More trades available to him. I'm not sure if I'm that keen on putting the Ditto down, actually, because that, that's, like a, that's a single prize for 40 HP. 40 that hit points is value. Yeah. But uh, he's going to trade away one Slugma here. And uh, it's got to be a flying flip to end his turn. Crushing Hammer not going to be too helpful. No. He could also go for a Rattus beating, maybe deal with a Malamar, make it more difficult for something else. But, um, you know, you can't really allow this Necrozma GX to stay on board for much longer. Flying flip, 20 to all of William's bench Pokemon, whilst also Pedro going down to three prize cards remaining. Still missing on that max potion, though. Yeah, and uh, not, be able to be, not being able to fetch it out is really going to hurt him. Up goes the Tapu Koko for William. Draws for his turn. It's like a, there's an acro bike there. He has got the magical swap Tapu Lele in his hand. Whether he goes for that this turn or not is another matter. There's not that much damage to work with because before, though Ace Roller is really putting in a lot of work for Pedro. Well, I think because William, I mean, he has that acro bike, but currently there's no Guzma, and he wants to take two prizes into two prizes. So it might be magical swaps his best bet, just so that he can take these two prizes without needing to use a Guzma. Yeah, because he can just uh, move all the damage off of that Zoroark, just KO Zora and the Ditto, put some more damage somewhere else to soften something else up and then finish up with, it with an Onyx, for example. So let's see this Acrobite. Getting back the Rescue Stretch is a big deal because yes. that could be a prismatic burst for game after a Magical Swap if he needs it. Looks like he's holding on to some uh, escape ropes as well. Here comes this Tapu Lele, and as we are saying, it's probably his best bet now that he doesn't have a Guzma available. Yeah, because uh, it's still a way for him taking two prizes without needing it, and then he has one more turn to get the Guzma to his hand and uh, finish off the game by yeah, just KOing the, one of the Zoroarks. We're going to see uh, two Psychic Recharges committed from William. And uh, potentially another one elsewhere on the board yeah. if he wants to. He has plenty yeah. of Psychics to deal with in the back, but... Uh, Keeping them open is always an option. Uh, you only need the two to use Magical Swap yeah. here. So he has 160 damage to work with right now here. So, so obviously he's going to KO the Ditto and the Zora. He has six sort of leftover damage. And this is going to be what he has to, where he has to decide where this is best placed. I think you want to you wanna make sure Zoroark's in range of a three energy Prismatic Burst. I think that's the most important thing. And that's exactly what he's done. And he's also just going to put two on the other Zoroark. Yeah, yeah, so so with that one Zoroark is now in range of a prismatic burst of free energy. Yeah, definitely a smart move from William. Playing his game plan as best as possible, getting to see that magical swap. Not quite for the full value, as no, no, uh, no. Pedro has done well to use Acerola two turns in a row to undo you know, a lot of that damage. Uh, but uh, still making it work for him, as he doesn't currently have Guzma in hand, working towards a big finish with an Onyx or a prismatic burst. Yeah. Here comes Rescue Stretcher from Pedro. He's going to grab, grab himself another Zora. Oh, actually, no, he's going to shuffle stuff back in. So, shuffling in two Zoras and a Zora Rock. Yeah, it's an interesting one. He's getting to the late game stages. I'm not sure how many more Zoraks he can get into play. If he could get another Zorua down this turn, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, but it feels interesting to do that before trading. Yeah, it does. His hand size is absolutely monstrous as well at this point. <laughs> okay. William does have a judge available to him, but it feels like uh, he's going to be looking to Guzma to end his game here. So looks like he's just going to be sat on an absolutely huge hand. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> what do you do when you have that many cards in that hand? So when your hand, rather, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. Just think, what, I have so many options. Where do I even like, go from here? Um, crushing hammers, like we already mentioned, not the most useful at, uh, right now, given that obviously the Malamars can just get back the energies with, with psychic recharge. Although it would mean that uh, it would make it perhaps a bit more awkward for um, William to retreat. Say, for example, if he was able to get two Crushing Hammer heads, then he would have to attach from hand to retreat the Tapu Lele. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad thing. For me, I'd like to see him go for a, um, a Guzma on a Malamar. I mean, and, exactly uh, like that. <laughs> he's actually going to, yeah, he's going to do that indeed. Gets that Tapu Coco back into the active. He's just saying, well, William, you don't have any big one-hit-go Pokemon on your board, so... I guess I'm just going to try and slow you down and go for some flying flips to buy myself some time. Yeah, no, this is really, really clever because he knows that time is on his side, essentially, so he can afford to play a slower game and just sort of stop William from taking prizes rather than him actually just taking the free prizes himself to win. 
He's also going to go ahead and grab that Ultra Ball. He's just recycled some Zorua and Zoroark, so that's exactly what he's going to go ahead and grab. Give himself even more control over the game as his deck size is dwindling, but it just gives him access in case uh, William does go for any of those judge shenanigans, which we've seen him do in that first game. So he's protecting himself for every eventuality at this point. And he actually just trades the Zorua away. It's not a bad... It must. I'm not really sure what he's digging for at this point, but I mean... He might not be digging, but maybe he's just concerned about putting down too much other stuff that following a few more flying flips and magical swaps could result in him losing. Yeah, I guess if he's not going for Rita's beating this turn and he's you know content with his hand that there's not much else he needs to do here, but I'm surprised he had a lot of cards that he could have taken out of his hand that weren't Zerua, so mm -hmm. it was an interesting choice just to burn it after just recycling it. Yeah, it's interesting indeed. Uh, what's going to be more interesting now from William's side is how he responds to this. I don't believe he has access to Guzma still. I, I, didn't, I didn't see him drawing... Oh, no, he does actually have access to Guzma. Ooh, he's got the Guzma. It could have been... You know, if everything had gone, you know, straightforwardly for William and Pedro just happened to knock out the magical swap, um, Tapu Lele, it could have just been game right there and then for yeah. him. But Pedro's played craftily and got himself out of an awkward situation. Yeah, he sort of realized that there's no point in... Actually, oh, does he concede? Wow, there it is. Pedro's done it. Time was called. And with no viable attackers on the board, uh, William knows that he wouldn't have been able to close that game. So very, very crafty play at the end there from Pedro. Yeah, Pedro, an extremely, extremely intelligent player, knows exactly how to approach the matchup. And obviously, getting you have a little bit lucky in the first game that William made that mistake with the... Uh, with the prize penalty there, but absolutely fully deserving of uh, that win in game, game two. Just played that sensationally. Yeah, he strutted his stuff with some smart play there, some interesting tech choices. Tapu Koko is not in every one of these Zorark control archetypes, so it's definitely something to bear in mind, and it really helps him out there. Setting up damage with the 160 for Rita's beating. Not many of these Zorark control decks even play choice bands, so no. he's used his tech cards perfectly. And again, another victory for Zorark control on our stream this weekend. Not doing the control stuff. Um, no. He's being a lot more aggressive until the right, right at the very end there. But um, that's just down to the bell of silence and uh, how William decided to approach the matchup. I really like that tech card. I think going forward for Malamar, bell of silence is going to be something that's integral to keep your matchup close against Zorak build. So I really.